decision. Today's topic is greatest decision. Respond to Moses and the prophets. Respond to Moses and the prophets. Let's say a word of prayer as we start today's Bible lesson. Father, we thank you for today. We appreciate your holy name for your faith. For your goodness, for your love. We are praying, children. Thank you for another time of Bible lesson. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us here to learn from you. Lord, we say we are grateful. Lord, today's Bible lesson, we pray, oh Lord, reveal yourselves to these little ones. Let them understand, open their eyes of understanding. Let them understand your will and your way in Jesus' name. And at the end of today's Bible lesson, they will know more about you. No more about your love for them, about your heart for them. You reveal Jesus to them in their own level, at their in their own way, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for my love. words in my mouth that every time I open my mouth to speak, it will be filled with the message that will be a blessing to the hearts of those children and to everyone. That will be part of this Bible lesson that will be watching this later online in Jesus' name. Thank you. Yeah. We pray for children that are not yet here, but yeah. them fast so that they will not miss out on what you have in store for today. Thank you, Father, for everything from Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen. Okay. Amen. amen and amen. All right. So Quickly, we'll go to uh Bible reading for today, and we'll be reading. We have something Luke chapter 24, verse 17 to 27. That's 11 verses to three. So please bring out your Bibles open to Luke chapter 24. Luke 24, verse 17 to 27. And dear precious gold, precious gold, and dear precious. She God is there. how many people now? Precious and your So I have four in all. Okay, so this is what I will do. Uh precious said she got it. Okay. So it's okay. It's okay. I think I have four people already. I will not be needing more. So I'm just looking for a way to divide it amongst four people. Seven oh, verses, so three, three, three. Oh, the last person we read to. So this is how we do it. The first question is uh, precious. So precious, you read three verses. Gold, you read three verses. Rere, you read three verses. Then Eniola will read the last two. Is that okay? Am I playing like that? So are you ready? So precious, you start. Please, everybody that is meant to read, follow the Bible reading so that you don't get to your turn and you'll be lost. All right, please okay. start reading. Precious, read the 17. Precious, read 17, 18, 19. Okay, ma'am. Yes. And he said to them, What manner of communication are you, that you have one to another as you walk and as start at 18? And the one of them. Who's the slayer of us? Answering, and I've not known the things which are come to pass here in this day. And I'm here to them what them concerning Jesus of Nazareth, what was which was a prophet mighty indeed and word before God and all the people. Okay, thank you. 20, 21, 22, gold. <laughs> Oh, are you there? 20 to 22. Yes, ma. Read it. And how the chief priests and our rulers de delivered him to become them to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that had that had that it had been which which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since th these things were done. Yea, and certain 
And certain women also of our company made us a stonage, which, which were early at the second camp. And when they found not his body, they can say that they had also seen a vision of him, which said that he was alive. Come on, see, brother. Twenty three to twenty five, twenty three to twenty five, twenty three to twenty five. And did not find his body, and they came back saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb. As the women had said, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, foolish men, and to believe all that the prophet had spoken. Okay, thank you. 26 and 27, and your last. Okay. <laughs> so, what is this clearly predicted by all the prophets? that the Messiah would have to suffer all these things before entering his time of glory. The, then Jesus quoted them passage after passage by, from writings of the prophets, beginning with the book of Genesis, and going right on through the scriptures, explaining all the passage meant and what they said about himself. Okay, well, thank you so much. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. So we read uh, the passage you have been read today is Luke chapter 24, verse 17 to 27. And it was actually about, after, it was after the death of Jesus. And these two followers of Jesus were walking from a place and they were going to Emmaus, a village named Emmaus, about seven miles away from Jerusalem. And they were walking and talking. And as they're walking and talking, a third person joined them. They didn't know the third person that joined them was Jesus himself. Jesus that was dead, that they were not happy about. And you know, and as they were walking, they were just sad. And Jesus asked to ask them, why are you sad? What is happening? And they said, don't you know what is happening? Did you hear what is happening? How Jesus of Nazareth was killed and crucified and now he's dead? Did you hear what is happening? We are all died. And well, he said, we are all sad. This man was a prophet and was considered by all, by all the people to be powerful in everything he said. In fact, they had seen Jesus as their Messiah. They never thought he would die this way. So they are so sad. And you know, Jesus was asking them questions and they were talking and they were telling Jesus everything that was happening, giving him everything. And you know what? But they never knew it was Jesus that joined them. They never knew. Okay? So what happened? So as they were talking, Jesus still answered them and said, How foolish are you? Are you how slow are you to believe everything the prophet said? He said, Was it not necessary for that the Messiah will suffer these things? Have you not read it from the book of Moses and the prophets that the Messiah will, 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 will suffer all of those things? And he said in verse 27, we said, Jesus explained to them what was said about himself in the scriptures, beginning with the books of Moses and the writings of the prophets. So Jesus had to explain to them again the Bible. The books of the Moses. Who can tell me the books of Moses? Who knows the books of the Moses? Who can tell me the books of Moses? Yes, anybody? Adiola. Yes, list the books of Moses for me. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Thank you. So from Genesis to Deuteronomy, Jesus was being talked about. Even though it was the book of the Lord, it was also called, uh, it was also called the book of the Lord, the book of Moses. It, that means in those in those books in, from Genesis to Deuteronomy, Jesus was embedded in it. Jesus was actually in all those books, and Jesus was making these disciples see how he has been talked. He was being talked about. He's been talked about in the book of Moses and also the books of the prophets. Who can tell me? Do you know the books of the prophets? We have the books of the major prophets, books of the minor prophets. Do you know the books of the prophets? Anybody? Do you know the books of the prophets? Who are the prophets in the Bible that you know? And what are their books? You, if you know the books of the Bible songs, you should be able to know the books of the prophets and list them out. Yes, anybody wants to try? Samuel. Samuel. Second anybody Samuel. wants to try? Uh huh. Apostles. Apostles. Acts of apostles. Oh, Isaiah. Isaiah. Jeremiah. Jeremiah. First Samuel. Second Samuel. Lamentation. Yes, it's written by Jeremiah too. Yes. Uh huh. 
is that Jeremiah? Out of the, out out of the apostles. No, no, no. Out of the apostles. No, no. Is, no, no. is Isaiah, oh. Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel. Although Daniel in Bible Bible was not considered a prophet, but yes, Daniel. Oh. We have the minor prophets who are Osea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah. Is that okay? Because all these people I just mentioned are all prophets. So we call them the books of the prophets. Major, uh, the major prophets, the minor prophets. Yes. Okay. So that is so in the Bible, Kabu is categorized into all those uh bo all the books are categorized. So we have the book of Moses, which is the first five books in the Bible. I will answer our questions after now. And we also have the book of the prophets, which, which we have just listed now. So Jesus had to explain and show it to those disciples, reveal Jesus to them, that Jesus has been revealed in all these books of the prophets. So Jesus was actually showing them all of those books and, and reminding them again, as Jesus has been revealed in all of those books. Okay? That's the story. At the end of the day, Jesus opened their eyes and they were able to know that, oh, this is Jesus you have been speaking to. You know, the disciples said, so this is Jesus. If we just say, ah, how come he knows so much? You know, that was the ending of that story of the walk to a mouth. Okay, so they discovered that it was Jesus. Because that's what they were thinking. How come he, he understood the scripture that much and explained to them that much? Jesus was saying, ah, ah, how are you like this? But these things have been talked about. In the book of the prophets and in the book of Moses, how come... You don't know about it and you are still sad. Jesus had to die because if Jesus didn't die, then we would not, we would not have life that we have today. There will be nothing called eternal life if Jesus didn't die. And it was all embedded. It's, it was all written in the book, uh, in the scriptures. It's all there. All right, come along with me as we go to this Bible. I will talk about this Bible story. Okay, there was once a rich man who dressed in purple who dressed in purple and fine linen? In the only day you see anybody dressed in purple, is always a royal robe. Yes. A purple linen is always depicted as a royal robe. It's royalties, the kings that dress in purple robes, or rich people, very rich people. Yes. So this rich man was he was dressed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. That means he feasted very well. He was just enjoying life. Every day, this rich man was always enjoying life. And you know what? This rich man didn't care about God or anyone else. He didn't know any, he's just, his own is just to enjoy life. He doesn't know who God is. He didn't even care. He cared only for himself and himself alone. He doesn't care about anyone else and doesn't care about God. And on the other hand, there's this other uh, poor man named Lazarus that is at the man's gate, the rich man's gate. This poor man was always there. His body was covered with sores. Can you see the way it looks? Wretched, you know, dirty. He's always covered with sores. And he longed to eat crumbs thrown out after the rich man ate. So after the rich man, you know, the rich man didn't care about anybody. So he would just eat anything he throws away. That's what this uh, poor man, Lazarus, will look for and eat as food. This rich man didn't even care. He doesn't know how to take care of the poor or anybody. So even dogs came and licked this man's body this lazarus body this poor man's body because his body was filled with sauce and you know dogs now they like anything with blood so they are licking they are licking the wounds on his body hmm. so the poor man however this poor man was very poor but however he believed this poor man believed and embraced the love of god for him this poor man didn't joke with the love of god he believed god's word he believed in jesus he believed in uh, the finished work of Jesus and got the love of God for him. He's a believer. All right. You see, this rich man was nothing, doesn't believe, he doesn't know anything, but this other man, poor man, was a believer. So now the poor man died. And after this poor man died and was carried by the angels, he was carried by the angels to Abraham's side. So Lazarus died, the poor man, and he was carried by the angel to Abraham's side. Can you see this very poor man looking wretched and uh, untidy and dirty on earth? Can you see him? When he was being taken to Abraham's side, can you see? Can you see? He's the one in the blue robe. You see how he's looking full and good after death. Okay, this rich man also died and was buried. But you know that this rich man doesn't care about God. He doesn't even know God. So what happened? His soul went to hell. 
Lazarus' soul went to Abraham's side, while the soul of the rich man went to hell. The poor man went to a place of rest. Can you see him enjoying life? Even he had people taking care of him. He went to a place of rest for those who believe or not. You know, we just children that any believer, every believer of the gospel of Christ, when they die, they go to a place of rest. Eh? To await the time of their reward. They go to a place of rest where they await when Jesus will come and reward them for the good that they have done, for believing in him. Eh? For believing in him, there is a reward for every believer, even after death. There is a reward. And that was where Lazarus was. He was in a place of rest and awaiting the time of reward. So, so this rich man, can you see the rich man? As he was in torment in hell, you know, the said the soul went to hell. So he was in torment in hell. He was really passing through pain in hell. The rich man looked up. As he was in pain, he looked up and he saw Laz and he saw Abraham far off in Lazarus. So this rich man recognized Lazarus. He knew what who Lazarus was, but he did not help Lazarus when he was on earth and he was rich. He looked at Abraham's side and, and saw Abraham and saw Lazarus, Lazarus at his side, and he called out. This rich man had to call out from hell. He so called and said, Father Abraham, please have mercy on me. Send Lazarus. You see, he said, Send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. I'm in great distress. I'm in great pain. This pain is so much because of this fire. This fire is hot, is hot. The pain is too much. You know, he thought he was still on earth when he can command. He said, Father Abraham, just tell Lazarus beside you. Just tell him. Let him dip his hand in water and put it. You see, he was still living. He was still saying that kind of thing in hell. And you know what? Abraham said, child. Remember that everybody, we are Abraham's, uh, we are children of Abraham, right? Abraham says, child, remember that in your lifetime, you received your good things. He said, when you were on earth, you had good things. You had everything to yourself. You enjoyed life. And Lazarus, likewise, when Lazarus was on earth, and Lazarus, likewise, bad things. He said, when Lazarus was on earth, only bad things happened to him. In fact, he was a pauper. There was nothing. He was so poor that even the dogs were, the dogs were licking his sore. But now, he has died and he's been comforted here. What was the difference? Because he believed. He believed in the Lord Jesus. He believed that Jesus died and rose again for him. And when he died, he went to the place of rest. And now you, you, you died even after living a good life on earth. And you are in anguish. You are in suffering. You are in pain. Children, yeah, I want to ask the question. Is it wrong to enjoy a good life on earth? Is it wrong? No. No. It's not wrong. No. Even, even our Heavenly Father, our Heavenly Father, wants us to enjoy good life on earth that is the plan of our heavenly father for we his children he wants us to always enjoy good life here yeah? and even after death he wants us to enjoy good life so besides all this that was the abraham speaking to to the rich man in hell he said beside all this there's a great pit can you see you can only see us but there's a great pit between hell and this place of rest it's fixed between us so that Nobody can cross over from where we are to where you are. Nobody can do so. No one can cross. That was what Abraham told the rich, uh, the rich man in hell. So the rich man said, then I beg you, send Lazarus. This rich man is still telling Abraham. I said, see, that Lazarus sitting beside you. Please don't let him just sit there. Send him to my father's house. I still have brothers there i still have siblings my siblings are still alive let him go to my house and warn my five brothers so that they don't come to the place of torment so that they won't come to hell so that they won't experience this pain i'm experiencing please send my brothers to them let them to know so that they can live a better life on earth won't it be a good idea if someone can return from the dead to warn others about the danger of hell children will it be a good idea that God can want someone, someone that's already died, then God will cause the person to rise up again and say, ah, I've been there. Please change your ways. Don't live this kind of life. It's no good at all. The end of it is no good. I'm just permitted to come and warn you. Wouldn't it be good? Wouldn't yes. it be good? Yes. 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 Okay, let's continue. Yes. Let's continue. We'll come on to that question. But you know what yes. Abraham said? You know what Abraham said? Abraham said, see, they have Moses. And the prophets, they must respond to them. 
Abraham 16. God has given them his word. God's word. God's word is, not, is already available. Let me bring my other, but this God's word is already available for them. Eh? When they read God's word, the word of the, uh, the Moses and the prophets has been said. Let them respond to God's word. What is the central message of Moses and the prophets? What is it all about? What was this? What's the central uh, message? Let's see. John chapter 5. Don't open. It's already mm. open here with me. I'll just read mm. it. John chapter 5, verse 39 says. Let me quickly read it. John 5, 39 says, You study the scriptures because you think that in them you will find eternal life. And this very scripture speaks about me. He said, Why do we study the scriptures? Because we think we'll find eternal life in them. And Jesus said, These scriptures, this Bible, Jesus says it speaks about him. So everything about this Bible speaks about the person of Jesus, leads us back to Jesus. And also, let's read Luke chapter 24, verse 27. That's just the ending part of uh, where we read at the beginning. Let me read it. I'll just quickly read it. Verse 27 says, And Jesus explained to them, he explained to these followers on their way to a mouse. He explained to them, he said, he explained to them what was said about himself in the scriptures. Beginning with the books of Moses and the writings of all the prophets. So the book of, even the book of Moses, which was the Old Testament, the writings of the prophets, which was the Old Testament, all talks about Jesus. They all talk, uh, sorry, all talk about Jesus. They all talk about Jesus. All the books, whether the Old Testament or the New Testament, talks about Jesus. Talks about how Jesus will come, how he will die. And, and if you believe in him, you will have eternal life. And the word of God will always say, listen to him. Listen to him. Okay? So, no. Father Abraham, you know, this was the same conversation between Father Abraham and the rich man in hell. The rich man said he could send Lazarus to go and warn his brothers. And Abraham answered uh, the rich man that, no, they have the prophets. They have Moses. The words of Moses are already there. Let them follow what he has said, pointing them to Jesus. The rich man still said, no, Father Abraham. But if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. He said, and like now, if someone dies now and goes to them, he said, they will repent. But you know what Abraham said? Abraham said, if they do not respond to Moses and the prophets, they have the Bible, if they can read this Bible and still they did not believe in the Bible, they will not still believe in anybody. Even if the person rises from the dead, they will still not believe the person. Have you not had stories of people that will come back and say, oh, I died. I saw hell. This is what is happening. Do people believe? People will just laugh at them and say, what's wrong with this person? Please just go and sit down. Go and sleep somewhere. Please, what are you saying? People will not believe. Whoever wants to believe will believe. They don't need people to rise up from the dead to tell them that, hey, heaven is real. Hell is real for them to believe. Just by reading the scriptures and believing in the scriptures, you will know that heaven is real. And so, so also is hell. So Abraham said, if they don't respond to Moses and the prophets, if they don't respond to God's word as we give it to them, this is the Bible. It is easily accessible by all. He said, if you read this Bible and you don't believe it, then even if someone rises from the dead, it will still not convince these people. It will still not make them believe. Hmm? It will still not make them believe that what? That Jesus is Lord. Children, I asked the question the other day. I said, it would not be nice for someone to just wake up from the dead. I said, oh, this is me. I've woken up from the dead. Ah, hell is real. I entered it. Please, all of you live a better life on earth. Please. No. No. That is why we have the Bible. And that is part of what that is part of the reason why we come to Bible lesson from time to time is to learn more about Hello. God's word. Is to know more about God's word. It's to be able to know that God's word is very important. And everything written in, in here, children, is the truth. He talks about Jesus. It is the truth. So we say that Jesus died for your sins and he rose again so that you will have life. That is the truth. You better believe it. Don't let it be too late like the rich man. The rich man had all of those things when he was on earth, but he closed his ears to read. The Bible says he did not care about God. He did not care about anyone. And we see how so many people living nowadays, they don't care about God. They don't care about anyone. You know, when we talk about the love of love of the Father for them, they think, well, why, is it, why are these people shouting? Why is it shouting again? Why are you disturbing my life for goodness sake? Stop it. And you know, I will answer all questions after now. And you know, when you tell them Jesus loves you, say, don't tell me that again. Some people can even go and lock people up because of that. Some people have been locked up. Some people have been killed 
because of them preaching God's message and telling them that hell is real, heaven is real. Jesus loves them. Give your life to Jesus. Jesus loves you. Some people don't just want to hear that. But today, we are reminding each other, we are reminding ourselves again, children, that hey, heaven is real and hell is real. But you know what? We are still on earth. God loves us so much that he gave his only begotten son. The Bible says, whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. And remember, children, the word of God is the truth. It never lies. It is the truth. He said, whoever believes will have eternal life. What is eternal life? Eternal life is enjoying life here on earth and also enjoying life after death. That is eternal life. God does not want us to suffer on earth. Then after, after life, you now go and enjoy life. No, he wants you to enjoy life in every way, on every side. How much of God's word do you know? How much of God's word can you apply into your life? When you know him, when you apply it, you enjoy life here on earth. And you also enjoy life in heaven. God does not want you to enjoy life here on earth and go to hell. And he does not want you to suffer here on earth and go to heaven. He wants you to enjoy both. Because that is the kind of life Jesus came so that you can enjoy. Jesus was on, when Jesus was on earth, he wasn't rich. He wasn't healthy. He was even moving from place to place. He wouldn't have no house to live in. Because he was moving from place to place. You know why? So that you can come and enjoy the life that he did not enjoy while on earth. And also, he said, I have gone before you to prepare a place for you. Where is the place? That is the place of rest. It is the place of rest. That is heaven where you enjoy life. He has gone to prepare that place for you too. He has prepared earth for you. And he has gone ahead to prepare heaven for you. Would, you. would you rather not enjoy that kind of life that Jesus has given to you? Why would you say no to that kind of life? And that is why we are preaching this message today. And the message is what? Greatest decision. Children, have you made that great decision? Have you made the decision to follow Jesus? Have you made the greatest decision to believe in his word? Have you made the greatest decision to re receive and accept God's love for you? And say, yes, I believe Jesus died on the cross for me. I believe that he died and rose again so that I can enjoy life on earth and enjoy life eternally. I receive him into my heart as my Lord and my Savior. I receive him totally. I give myself to him. I give my all to him. Don't be like that rich man that enjoyed wealth. He enjoyed life on earth, but his, his soul was destroyed. His soul had enjoyed eternal, eternal pain in hell. And why Lazarus enjoyed a better life even after death. Okay. Let's quickly read uh, the Bible verses we have here. Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 15, that's the International Children's uh, Bible. Moses said, the Lord your God will give you a prophet like me. He will be one of your own people. Listen to him. Can you see how Jesus is being said in the Old Testament? This was Moses in Deuteronomy. This is Moses, a book of Moses. He said, the Lord your God will give you a prophet like me. Who is that prophet? That is Jesus. Jesus came. But do you know what children, when Jesus came, did people listen to him? Did people believe in Jesus when he came? The people believe in him? Uh, no! Yeah. Majority, no, only few no, believe in him. No, only his disciples. No. Only his disciples and very few followers believe in him. Majority did not believe in him. And that was why they killed him. That was why they said, release Barabbas, who was a thief. They said, release Barabbas. We don't mind. Even Barabbas that killed their no. children, killed their loved ones, they said they should release him, but they should crucify Jesus. When Jesus came, they didn't even believe. They were the ones that shouted, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. You see, they didn't listen to him. But the book of Moses says, listen to him. He said, somebody will come. He will be one of your own people. They said, is he not the son of Joseph? Who is he? We know him very well. Is his father not a carpenter? Eh? Now he said he wants to be the savior. How? They didn't believe in him. They didn't listen to him. And they killed him. They thought if they killed him, they had destroyed him. No. But killing him was part of God's plan for him. Because if Jesus did not die, you and I will not have eternal life today. Jesus had to die to give us eternal life. Because he had to pay the death. He had to pay, he had to pay the debt that we hold, which is the debt of sin. He had to pay it in full so that we can have a free life and have eternal life after today, after now. Okay, and also the book, uh, the prophets also said, John, in John chapter 1, verse 29 to 30, he said the next day, that's John the Baptist, John saw Jesus coming toward him, and John said, look, the Lamb of God, he takes away the sins of the world. 
This is the one I was talking about. I said, a man will come after me, but he is greater than I am because he was, he was living before me. This was John the Baptist. John the Baptist, he said, is a forerunner of Jesus. He's the one that came, he came before Jesus to talk about Jesus, to prepare the way for Jesus. And he told people, he told his disciples, immediately he saw Jesus. He said, see, look, the love of God, that is the love of God. He did not point to himself. He said, yes, I am a prophet, but no, there's somebody bigger than me. And that is him. He said, he takes away the sins of the world. This is the one I was talking about. A man will call after me and he is greater than I am because he was living before me. You know, before Jesus came to this world, he is God. He has lived before. He just came to this world to fulfill, to fulfill his own purpose, which is to die for us so that we can have, enjoy eternal life. John chapter 14 verse 6 says, Jesus answered. In John chapter 14 verse 6, he says, I am the way. This is Jesus talking. Jesus says, I am the way. I am the truth and the life. The only way to the Father is through me. Children, are you waiting for somebody to come again from there to come and tell you that Jesus is the way? The scriptures has already said it. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He said, the only way to the Father is through me. The only way how you can enjoy life after now is through me. The only way you can enjoy life right now is through me. The only way you can enjoy eternal life is through me because Jesus is the way. And if somebody says he's the way, if you go and pass through another way, will you get to the, will you get to the Father? No. You have to go through the way, which is Jesus. Just like if you are going to your house and you don't go through the way to your house, will you get to your house? It's not possible. If you go through another way, it will lead you to your house. You have to only go through the way that leads you to your house before you can get to your house. So also, if you want to enjoy eternal life, you have to go through the way. If you want to get to the uh, to your father in heaven, you have to go through the way. And who is the way? Jesus. And this Jesus, in all the pages of the Bible, all the pages of the Bible talks about this Jesus. It talks about this Jesus. And what are we doing on this platform? We are still talking about this Jesus. Children, God loves you so much that wherever you turn to, wherever you, you are, you hear about the love of this uh, Jesus for you. Jesus loves you. I don't even know I can say it. I can say it again and again and again and again so that you will get it. Children, Jesus loves you so much and he doesn't want you to perish. He doesn't want you to be like that rich man and said, oh, had I known, I would have listened and lived a better life and believed in him while I was on earth so that I can enjoy this kind of life after life. But now you have the opportunity, like the rich man, you have the opportunity too. Jesus is telling you, child, I love you. What are you waiting for? You have been hearing my word over and over again and you are still doing bad things. You are still doing wrong things. Eh? You are still doing what you are not supposed to do. Like the shepherd we talked about last week is calling you today. He said, come back. Come back. I love you. Come back to the fold. Come back to the fold. I have died for you. I have taken your place. Don't use your life again to die again i have already done that don't waste your life by dying it's not worth it i have taken your place so that you can enjoy life and that is that is jesus talking to you today children jesus is saying i have died for you what are you waiting for just believe in me accept me into your life that is all that is needed for you to enjoy this eternal life children wherever you are right now i just want you to bow your head and i want you to talk to your heavenly father maybe you are here you have never told Jesus to come into your life before. In fact, you have never accepted Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior before. This is the right time to do so. You have a golden opportunity. You have a golden opportunity. And now you have a higher hand compared to that rich man. Now is the time to tell yourself, no, I want to enjoy eternally just like Lazarus. I don't want to end up like the rich man in hell. Father, help me. Oh, Lord, I am sorry. I accept you into my life as my Lord and Savior. I want you to say all these words. Come and reign in me. Be my God. Be my Father. Save me. I am a sinner. Wash me white as snow. Help me, Father. Reign in my life. I don't want to continue this way. I don't want to be like the rich man that lost his soul in hell. I don't want to lose my soul in hell. I want to enjoy eternal life. And I've learned today that it's only in you that I can get eternal life. Lord, save me. Save me. I accept your love. I believe 
that you died on the cross for me. And I confess that you are my Lord and Savior today. Help me. Or maybe you have told Jesus to come into your life before. And you don't even need to do so. Because once you have told Jesus to come into your life before, he is already there. He will never leave you. In Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5, he said, he will never leave you. I will never forsake you. He will never leave and forsake you. So just begin to pray. You say, Lord, thank you. If you have told Jesus to come into your life before, you are a believer, you are a child of God, begin to thank him. Say, Lord, I thank you for your love. Thank you for the kind of love you have for me. Thank you for giving me eternal life. Thank you because I know that you have called me to enjoy life here on earth and also life after now. Thank you, Father, because I enjoy all of this and much more. Lord, I am grateful. Thank you for your love. Thank you for the Father's love over me. I am grateful. Begin to thank God. For those of you that are believers already, begin to thank God for life. Begin to thank God for his love. Begin to thank Jesus for what he has done for you on the cross. Begin to tell him that he will continue to help you, that you continue to live an outstanding life for him. You continue to live a life that will be proud of. Begin to tell him that, Father, help me to continue to live a life that you'll be proud of. Life that you always, always look at me and say, I'm proud of you, child. Help me, Father. In Jesus' name, we are free. Amen. I want to say this, that if you are here, and you've just said this prayer of repentance for Jesus to reign in your life, to be your Lord and your personal Savior. Children, you are now a child of God. God is now with you. You are now considered the child of God. And you also can enjoy life after now. Because all that is needed is for you to confess your sin and tell him to come and reign in your life and be your Lord. Father, we thank you for those children. Thank you. Thank you, for you Lord. Have just given their lives to you. And those that have rededicated their lives to you. Thank you, Father, because this is the greatest decision of man that we could ever make responding to Moses and the prophets, responding to what the scripture has said concerning the Father's love, responding to the person of Jesus. And that is what we have done today. We have responded to who you are for us. We know that you are Lord and our Savior. You have come to save us. And Lord will receive you as our Lord and Savior. We embrace your love for us and we enjoy life here on earth and eternally. Thank you, Father because we enjoy this great life in you. Thank you for the person of the Holy Spirit that you have left to direct and guide and counsel us all the days of our lives. Lord, we are grateful. And for everyone watching online right now, watching on Facebook and be watching on YouTube later, that's given their lives and rededicated themselves to you. Thank you for your love that envelopes them and guide them in the right way to start living from now onwards. Thank you, Father, because they are safe and your presence is forever with them, never to leave them, never to forsake them. Thank you for the person of Jesus. Thank you for your unending love. Your love, he said, is like a circle. It has no beginning. It has no end. Lord, we thank you for us. Thank you for another time to rededicate our lives back to you. We appreciate you. We give you glory. We will never take this love for granted. All the days of our lives, we will live a life standing for you in jesus name thank you father for everything beyond this thank you because you reveal yourself to this ones more each and every day as they grow in the knowledge of you and in the love of the father for them thank you lord for in jesus mighty name we are free amen okay so uh as i was teaching for some of you children, you people that have just uh, told Jesus to come into your life, it's as simple as that. You are now a child of God. Yes, and I want to say congratulations to you. You are now in the fold. So just like Lazarus, enjoy life at the bosom of Abraham. That is the kind of life you also will enjoy. Not just after life, but here on earth, your enjoyment starts here. And it is never all right, yes, for so people that raise their hands for questions, yes, what are the questions? Yes, Chiwe Talu has a question. Yes, please, you can ask your questions one after the other. Yes. Why did Moses I can hear you. Yes? Ask your question. Just ask your question. I'm listening. Ma, my question is that the Lazarus in this story, is it the same Lazarus that God 
raised from the dead. No, 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 no. It's not. It's different. This is just a story that uh, was told in the uh, New Testament. No, it's not that Lazarus is different. Hi. Yes. Yes. This is the story. Yes. I can't hear you. Can you speak clearly so that I can hear you? Why did Moses do not help him? Why did Moses did not help him? Why did Moses did not help him? No, 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 Father Abraham. Why did Father Abraham? Because Father Abraham told the rich man, you cannot help him. There's nobody if you if you die on earth after death, nobody can help you. And that is why we are telling you that the only chance we have now is when you are alive, when you are on earth. That is the chance you have to give your life to Christ. Anybody that does not give their life to Christ when on earth, when they are dead, it's too late for them. You can't give your life to Christ again after you are dead. And after you are dead, nobody can help you again. Nobody, not even Jesus can help you after you are dead. That is why you are hearing the message of God's love now. I say Jesus loves you. Give your life to Christ. That is why you are you are you are you are you, are, you have the message now. Because in this era we are in, we are the era of grace. Jesus died for us on earth and gave us grace so that we can repent. He showed us grace so that we can repent. But if you don't repent here on earth, after you are dead, nobody can help you again. That was what happened to the rich man. Nobody can help the rich man because he's already dead. And his soul is already sold out. He's sold out and he's already in hell. Nobody can help you when you die. After now, after death, no one can help you. That is why it's important to tell others about Jesus. That is why we say, don't keep this Jesus to yourself. Tell your friends about Jesus so that they also can know about Jesus and not and not live a life of pain that the rich man, uh, the rich man is living in hell right now. Is that okay? That is why it's important. Nobody can help you after you are Nobody. Have I answered your question? Have I answered your question? Yes, Elziba, yeah. what's your question? Elziba, what's your question? Why, why did he not answer? Why did who? Why did Abraham did not answer? Abraham answered. I just answered the question. Abraham answered him. Abraham said, Lazarus cannot help because there is a big ditch from the place of rest. Between heaven and hell, there is a big ditch that nobody can cross. Nobody, even Abraham cannot cross it. Lazarus cannot cross it. Nobody can cross it. Nobody can cross it to help anybody. When a person's soul has been lost in hell, he's sold out to hell. Nobody can help that person. Right now is the only time you can help somebody. And that is why we say, don't keep Jesus to yourself. Tell your friends about Jesus. Because after they are dead, nobody can help them again. This is the opportunity we have. Now we have grace. The grace of God is working for us now. Grace of God is covering so much for us on earth. And that is why we need this grace to be able to quickly reach out to millions. Because the song says, untold millions are still untold. So many millions have not heard about Jesus. But they need to hear about Jesus so that their lives will not be condemned at the end, so that they will not also find themselves in hell. Because when, and when they go to hell, nobody can help them anymore. It is now that you can help people around you by telling them about God's love so that they can give their life to Jesus and enjoy life now and also have eternal life and also enjoy eternal life. 